What's going on everybody? Welcome to a new video. This one we're going to be going over IB Strafing, the Minnesota Vikings club champion. Past three years he's been in the finals. I believe two years ago he won it. One year ago he lost to Wintgoat in the finals and this year he won it for his second championship in three year span, which is very, very impressive at high level competitive Madden. The consistency is impressive. He looked good doing it, had pretty dominant performances for the most part this year. And uh, just that level of consistency over that time span in Madden is very impressive. So if we look at the offensive side of the ball here, uh, we can see that he ran a lot of trips tied in from the New England Patriots playbook. A lot of inside zone, PA counter go, some double end sail and PA shot wheel. But really that inside zone and PA counter go were his bread and butter. Absolutely obscene numbers from PA counter go, averaging almost 30 yards a play. 26.27 yards a play, 11 calls, 289 yards. And so that's just in incredible efficiency from that one play. Averaged almost 10 yards a play in general, 9.98. Uh, so that's a very effective, you know, two game sample size on the offensive side of the ball from him. Averaged over seven yards a carry, three touchdowns on the ground. Averaged over 14 yards an attempt with three touchdowns through the air, no interceptions. So he took care of the football. A lot of his targets, as we can see right here, uh, went to his wide receivers, 85%. The other 15% went to his tight end. Never targeted the halfback out the backfield, um, but he really didn't need to. You know, uh, just like his routes thrown, he threw only six different routes. He threw, you know, a lot of deep crosses, a lot of in routes, and then if you take into consideration the playmaker in routes, uh, he actually threw a total of nine in routes in total. But he didn't need to have a, a large, you know, diverse group of routes throwing. Uh, he was throwing, he was so efficient with what he was doing, uh, there was no need for him to really branch out. And so, uh, if we look at the field position battle, he out he outplayed his opponents, won that by about 11 and 12 yards, average starting around his own 40, while his opponents were starting around their own 28 to 29 yard line. Won the turnover margin, was plus three in the turnover margin, and so he just really dominated pretty much in all facets of the game. If we take a look at his defense, you know, it's a little harder to see exactly what people are doing on defense this year with no previous play. You kind of just have to look at the shells, but a lot of guys make a lot of adjustments and, and change up those covered shells, but we could see he was in a lot of nickel 335 along with 34 odd, and he ran a little bit of nickel normal, not much, uh, but he did break out the nickel blitz too a couple times in what looked to be a cover three cloud setup, but like I said, a lot of guys will make a lot of adjustments with their covered shell, and you know they'll start off in a play, and the end shell will look nothing like the play they actually called. But this is what it looked like. He was running pretty effective on defense. You know, like it looks like nickel three three five Tampa two was his most called play. Twenty three calls, one hundred fifty nine yards given up. Kind of a bend but don't break style of defense. Ended up getting five sacks and one interception. Wasn't super aggressive in terms of blitzing. Average sending about 4.6 defenders, uh, which is probably on the lower side in terms of a lot of competitors. A lot of guys like to send, you know, five or six guys a play almost. Uh, but strafing was more conservative, usually sent between four and five. And, uh, you know, obviously that ended up working out for him. In terms of his routes thrown, like I said, he threw a lot of the deep crosses, a lot of the playmaker ends and the in routes. Uh, but I really want to look at some of his deep crossing routes. He was hitting them, you know, very, very early on in the games, and it was really just setting up everything else. And so he used deep crosses out of this gun trips tight end very, very effectively. And I want to take a look at a couple of examples of how exactly he did that. So in this first example, it's going to be from his first game against Blair, second offensive play of the game. And I think a big reason this was so effective is because a lot of people don't expect you to take that home run shot on the second play of the game. So first down, went to inside zone, picked up two yards, second down, bam, PA counter go. Uh, like I was talking about, so effective with this play on the day. And Blair's going to go with a five-man rush from a crossfire setup, and he's actually in good position to take this away so he goes and he's got apke over the middle and he sees the route developing but good use of personnel by strafing and putting tyree kill uh, running that deep crossing route so really you have to be out in front of it or else he's just going to run away from you and blair was just a little bit too indecisive on choosing to follow this fully and, and commit to it and that led to tyree kill being able to get behind him you know a very common route combo this year you can see the two the two uh, receivers in the area the streak from the tight end clears out the deep zones that deep cross comes in underneath it strafing sees it nice pass lead up the sideline and that's tyree kill and it's all it is going to take is one cut uh, right up the sideline good job staying in bounds keeping his momentum and just like that 58 yard touchdown so you can see strafing went to it early second play of the day for him he went to it early often and set the tone and, and, and basically made his opponent aware like hey i'm gonna kill you with this deep crossing route if you don't commit to stopping it 
Now we go to the second example, and you can see the clock, 4.58 in the first quarter, first play of the game, strafing going to go to the PA counter go setup, and Wolfman's going to be a little bit slow, just like Blair was in diagnosing and, and sticking with that deep crossing route, so Wolfman looks like he's in a nickel look, sends five, strafing picks up the pressure, Wolfman, once again, it's almost a repeat of the, the Blair Walsh play uh, from the first game, where he's on that crossing route, if my stylist will operate, he's on the crossing route, he sees it coming, but that's Tyree Kill. He's just going to run away from him. He gets a little bit too shallow. I don't know if he kind of peeled off and thought strafing might try and scramble or if he thought he might check it down to the underneath in route, but he peeled off. Now he's way too shallow. He's got Tyree Kill manned up, but Tyree Kill, once again, good use of personnel by strafing. He's going to run away from anybody trying to run across the field with him. Strafing stops, sets his feet. That might be the most important thing of this play is how he's scrambling, he's scrambling, and now right there he stops sets his feet, makes an accurate throw to the sideline, possession catch, Tyree Kill for, you know, like a 40-yard gain on the first play. So you can see a theme with strafing. He wants to come out, establish it early, and make his opponent know, like, hey, you have to stop this deep crossing route or else I'm going to hit it basically every time. And now that opens up the field and that opens up his other routes. That's going to do it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown on IB strafing from the Minnesota Vikings Club Championship. Stay tuned for more club championship breakdowns in the future as well. As always, like I said, thanks for watching, and until next time, guys, take it easy.